Hello, this is Gary Entz, and in this lesson, I will provide instructions for using MLA in-text parenthetical citations. A parenthetical citation, also known as a parenthetical reference, is the modern language association's prescribed method of giving credit to a source you quote, paraphrase, or summarize within your essay. A parenthetical citation, or PSIT for short, places essential source information, such as the author's name or title of the piece, page or paragraph numbers, etc., directly after the source material you use. It appears at the end of a quote, paraphrase, or summary. It gives clear credit to the source material at the point of use. It says to your reader, this is where I found this information. It is also a pointer to detailed bibliographic information you have listed on your work's cited page. There are many variations of the parenthetical citation, so the context of use must lead to the proper method you are using. Are you using a print source with page numbers? A source already attributed in the sentence? An anonymous source? A digital source without set pages? A digital source with numbered paragraphs? The citation style in each case must fit the context, so consulting a current handbook like OWL, Purdue, MLA to find the right models for your specific sources is essential. In this tutorial, I will cover what I consider to be the most frequent variations. First, let's discuss prose sources with page numbers. Are you using a source found in a physical book you hold in your hand? If so, you will be able to refer to its set pagination in your citations. Examples of prose sources are an essay or short story in an anthology, a textbook, a novel, a play written in prose rather than meter, and a newspaper or magazine article. If you are accessing a source digitally, the file may be an exact reproduction of an original print source. For instance, a print magazine has made the PDF version of an edition available online for download. If so, you should be able to see original page numbers within the copy and should therefore refer to its page numbers. Let's look at a few examples. When the source is not contextualized within your sentence and readers may not know who you're quoting, you will need to list the last name of the author followed by the page number, like this. There are a few things to note here. The end punctuation gets moved from the end of the quote to the end of the piece it. Items within the piece it are placed apart using standard spacing procedures and are not smushed together. Finally, notice that there are no punctuation marks within this PSIT. In this instance, I often see commas in the PSIT where they should not be. Remember, no commas in this instance. But what if you have contextualized the source name within an attribution? In this case, if there is no doubt which source you are quoting, then all you need in the piece it is the page number, just the number, like this. Here, the writer has mentioned the author's name in the introduction to the quote. So including her name again in the piece it is not necessary and would actually be redundant. What if your source lists no author? For instance, sometimes newspaper columns have no byline. In this instance, list a short version, shortened version of the title of the piece appropriately marked with quotation marks or italics, depending on the kind of source. If, say, the passage of time in the solitary reaper were anonymous, you would construct your quote and citation like this with only a shortened version of the title appearing 
along with the page number. Despite the shortening, the reader should have no problem finding the equivalent citation on the works cited page. Notice also that the title is appropriately marked with quotation marks, even within the parentheses, since it is considered a short work. If it were a long work, such as a newspaper, magazine, or book, the title would be italicized rather than quoted. Now that we've covered the basic PSIT models for sources with set pagination, let's move on to the digital sources without set pagination. In your academic writing, you may frequently ref reference digital sources, such as articles found in online databases, government or corporate websites, online magazines, uh, and ebooks. Sometimes a publication will offer a PDF copy of its print publication. A direct PDF copy of an original will feature the same set pagination as the original, so pages should be referenced for this kind of digital source. But more often than not, most digital sources have no set pagination. These may include sources such as database sources, pages on websites, essays in online magazines, online encyclopedias. When you print out a web resource, the number of pages will most likely vary depending on such things as the type size selected or the settings on your computer. Print pages for your particular print job are not considered official page numbers and should not be used for documentation purposes. Let's run through a few examples of P sets for digital sources now. How about when you do not mention the name of the source in your own setup of a quote? In this instance, since the reader may not know who you are quoting, the last name of the author is included in the PSIT. However, no page number is listed since the database version of the essay does not contain set pagination. But what if you do clarify the source's name in your setup of the quote? If you clarify the name of a source without set pagination, you can forego a piece it altogether. Placing end punctuation back into its standard position, as in this case. There is no need for a piece it here, since there are no page numbers and since the author has clarified the name of the source in the context of the sentence. Notice the end punctuation is tucked neatly into its original position within the quotation mark. Let's look at another variation. Sometimes a digital source will contain numbered paragraphs. If this is the case, you can refer to the paragraph number of any quote. For instance, here, if the author is not contextualized in the sentence, the piece it would look like this, with the last name of the author, followed by a comma, the abbreviation P-A-R, period, lowercase, and the actual paragraph number. If, however, you clarify the author's name, in your lead up to the quotient, quotation, your piece it would simply list the abbreviation and the paragraph number, like this. There is one final concept I would like to address before closing, and that is making sure that your piece sits are matched directly to works cited listings. Whenever you integrate source material, in addition to providing an attribution at the time of quote, you 
also must provide detailed bibliographic information of the source on a works cited page at the end of your paper. For instance, if you, if a, uh, you quote uh, Sharon Begley in your essay, then on the works cited should appear a corresponding listing under the author's last name, Begley. Because of this clear connection between in-text citations and the first word of the listing, your readers should have no problem finding the material. If you quote Benjamin Franklin in your essay, then on the work cited, there must be a corresponding entry under Franklin Benjamin. If you quote Christoph Koch in your essay, readers should be able to find the listing under K on your work's cited page. Here, if in your essay you quote an anonymous source, such as the essay, Morality Requires Religious Belief, clarifying the title of the piece, when you quote it, your readers should be able to find on the works cited page the listing under M. Here are all of the previous listings in works cited format. As you can see, the list is alphabetized by last name or by title, if an anonymous source. Each of these listings can be easily traced back to the names or titles attributed in the essay. To review, Whenever you use a source in your essay, be sure to clarify at the point of use the name of the author and the title. Use proper parenthetical citation format and punctuation. Use a current handbook such as OWL Purdue MLA for models. Create clear connections between sources used and works cited listings. We've reached the end of this presentation. I've shared with you only a few of the most common variations of parenthetical citations, but there are many more depending on the kind and medium of the source. For instance, a poem, a play written in verse, or a sacred text like the Bible or the Bhagavad Gita. Each must be cited according to its kind. So do your due diligence in order to clarify for your readers the information they need to find the works for themselves. I hope you found this information on MLA parenthetical citations useful. For more information, visit Owl Purdue MLA, contact me with any questions. If your course includes an embedded tutor, reach out to him or her for assistance. And finally, reach out to your campus's Learning Assistance Center for help. Thanks for following along. Enjoy your researching and writing.